Welcome to Core Cutting Today for January 16th, 2020. This is the show where I break down some of the biggest stories happening right now in the world of cord cutting and let you know my opinion on them. Now, if you wanna learn more about these stories, check out the show notes down below. I'll put a link there so you can read them for yourself in the order I talk about them. Let me know what you think. We'd love to hear from you. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, it helps us out a lot because it lets YouTube know you enjoy what we do. And hopefully we can help you break free from the high cost cable TV. Still watch the shows you enjoy. Well, there's been a lot happening in the world of cord cutting, but there's even more happening later today. Today is NBC's big press day. They will be having full cut, um, breakdown of their new NBC Peacock streaming service. Now this is a new streaming service launching later this year or um, in the first half of 2020. And they said there'd be a, there's rumors of a free version, a paid version, ad supported version, an ad free version. There's all kinds of stuff. Lots of original content coming, including um, new Battlestar Galactica, Saved by the Bell, Punky Brewster. I hope I said that right. And more coming to this new service when it launches. Now details on it are still kind of thin. We don't know a lot about it yet. That's what we're hoping to learn today. We're going to have full coverage over at cordcuttersnews.com, cordcuttersnews.com, link in the show notes. And uh, if you want to watch our live blog starting at 4 p.m. Eastern, we'll be breaking it all down. Of course, I'll be here tomorrow to break it all down on YouTube. But make sure to check us out over at cordcuttersnews.com so you don't have to wait for our update. Now, there is one interesting piece of information that came out yesterday. The Information, which is a great website that breaks down a lot of what's happening in the world of technology in general, not just core cutting, but they came out with a report that says Comcast is concerned about losing money on Peacock, so they're not investing as much. They're going to do a little over $2 billion, which sounds like a lot, but it's $2 billion for everything over two years. You compare that to Disney Plus's spending $2.5 billion just on a new content this year, or Netflix's $13 billion on new content this year, and you can see why um, people are kind of wondering if Comcast is as serious as some of their competition. Reports are um, many of Comcast's uh, Peacock competitors will be spending far more on content than Comcast will. So leave me a comment, get your predictions in now about what you think Comcast Peacock streaming service will be like. What do you think they're going to charge? Rumor is $5 for an ad free or ad supported, $10 for an ad free version. Let me know if that lines up with what you're hearing or what you think. And what do you think? What kind of hidden gem? There's reports that are being at a free version. Some people say it may be available to some, uh, maybe a limited selection of content to everybody. Other people said it would be free if you're a Comcast subscriber, for example. I want to know what you think. Get your, get your predictions in now. We'll see tomorrow who was closest to the truth. All right. AT&T has dropped plans to include Cinemax and HBO Max. Originally, when HBO Max was announced to take on like um, Apple TV Plus and Disney Plus and more, it was going to include both HBO and Cinemax content. Now, AT&T has announced that they're going to stop producing original content for Cinemax, and Cinemax content is not going to be found on HBO Max. Um, now, exactly when the production of original content will stop is unknown. AT&T does seem to be taking um, the acts to a lot of different departments. The audience channel is going to turn into an HBO Max preview channel. No new original content there. Now Cinemax is also losing original content. AT&T said that they believe Cinemax still has a value as it offers movies and stuff if you have it, but no more original content. Without being included HBO Max with no new original content, a lot of people are starting to ask, what is the long-term game plan for um, Cinemax as increasingly movies are becoming something you watch on demand whenever you want, rather than being like, oh, HBO has that 8 p.m. on Friday, I can go watch this particular movie right there. So it'll be interesting to see how this game plays out. at t is heavily in debt. I'm sure they're looking around like, hey, what is actually profitable? What is successful? Where do we want to put our energy? at t has said at t TV, which launches next month, and HBO Max are going to be where they're putting their energy. That could leave others out in the cold, including Cinemax is being reported as being left out in the cold right now. 
Does this bother you? Is there anything on Cinemax that you're saying, oh my, I can't believe they're canceling that show. It was my favorite show. Why are they doing? I've yet to hear anybody be very upset about Cinemax original content going away. So leave me a comment. Let me know what original programming on Cinemax will you miss? And the lack of Cinemax programming on HBO Max, does that change any of your plans to subscribe to HBO Max? I'd love to hear from you. All right, one of the biggest questions about core cutting is how many of these services do people actually use? Now, our readers tell us when they talk about paid services, the average is a little over three. 3.2, let's just say roughly, is the average paid services. Well, TiVo went and did a survey looking at the average paid and free services that um, core cutters and Americans in general use. And according to them, when you add in free services like IMDb TV, Pluto, Core TV, Weather Nation, all these free options out there, 6.9 is the average. Now, that doesn't mean paid. We're still seeing about three to four being the average how many services people are willing to pay. And when you count in then like Pluto, Zumo, the Roku channel, IMDb TV, and more, that's when you get closer to the seven services. So I'd love to know from you, how many streaming services, paid and free, do you actually subscribe to? Not how many do you pay for, but how many do you subscribe to? Now, I find this interesting. Uh, Roku earlier said the fastest growing area of streaming on uh, Roku players is ad-supported streaming services. Now, TiVo is coming out and saying again, the fastest growing segment of core cutting is ad-supported. Pluto TV, Zumo, Tubi, Crackle, the Roku channel, uh, Fossum, and more. All these free streaming services that give you a ton of content. I mean, new ones. NBC News is new for one. Uh, News on, uh, CBS News, and more. All these free services are offering a lot of very high-end, high-quality content that core cutters are finding to be very appealing. So leave me a comment. Are you finding yourself watching more free ad-supported services? Or are you one of the growing um, amount of people who say, hey, I am willing to pay for an ad-free experience? If, for example, I had to pick between IMDb with movies or Netflix, I'm going to go to Netflix because it's ad-free. Or do not care. Is it, if it has the movie and it's free, I'm willing to watch ads. More importantly, what service do you think is the best free ad-supported service? Recently, we surveyed our readers and they said Pluto TV, but has anything changed your opinion on that? Have you noticed that maybe there's a different service that's jumped out recently that is now your new favorite uh, free streaming service? So leave me a comment, but I'm very interested. If you can leave us a total number of services, how many you pay for, how many are free that you use? If you can break that out, that's a huge help. I'm interested. Um, is the seven seems a little high to me, but at the same time it doesn't because there's no reason why not to have Yahoo, IMDb, Court TV, The Weather Channel, Zumo, Pluto, The Roku Channel, and more all on your uh, streaming players, Apple TV, Roku, Fire TV, and more because they don't cost you anything and they all rotate content. They, sometimes they have some of the same content, but there's always something that's only on um, IMDb TV that you can't find a film rise, for example. There is a lot of that. So it doesn't cost anything. They're easy to add, and there's a lot of content there. So leave me a comment. Let me know what ones to use. I mean, is it Pluto TV still your favorite? Are you subscribing to services like Friendly also? Let me know. All right. Next up, Amazon has been getting a lot of pressure. A lot of people, a new competition coming. Apple TV+, Plus, Disney+, Plus, HBO Max, Peacock. Of course, um, Netflix and Hulu are all there. But people have been wondering if Amazon is going to be able to keep up as they continue to face more and more competition from services like the Apple TV Plus that's launching Peacock, which we'll learn more about later today and more. Now, Amazon has come out and said at the uh, Television Critics Association press tour, they're not concerned about this so-called streaming war. Amazon's going to continue to focus on creativity. And let's be honest, one of the big selling points for Amazon is the fact that 
it's not just about the content. If I'm an Amazon Prime member, I'm getting free shipping, I'm getting music, I'm getting books, I'm getting all kinds of stuff. But movies and television are a great addition, including the original content. Amazon is kind of saying, hey, we may not um, have uh, had some of the recent big blockbuster news that you know Disney Plus has had and more, but we have a great ecosystem here, brings people in, we're going to continue to produce great original content. Tom, the new Tom Clancy, uh, Jack Ryan show has been very well received and it's been growing very fast. So I'd like to know, what do you think? Is Amazon at any risk? Or are you like me? Like, hey, Amazon's really pumping out content. Maybe not enough to justify the cost just on the streaming side, but there's a lot of stuff in there. I think a lot of times people struggle to find all the content. Uh, uh, with Amazon Prime Video, I think one of their main failures is they hide some of it. They mix it in with the um, content you have to rent and content you have to buy. There's a lot of really good content there. Add in my free shipping, add in my free Amazon Music, my free um, news or magazines, all kinds of stuff that's free with my Amazon Prime subscription. And to me, I, I never even thought about canceling Amazon Prime just because I know overall the amount of content, the amount of stuff there makes it very well all worth it, especially with how much we buy on Amazon. And I think that's what Amazon wants. They wanna draw you in, make it so easy for you to buy on Amazon that this stuff supplements you buying more on Amazon. Let me know if that has been your experience. All right, YouTube TV yesterday announced new partnerships to allow you to bundle YouTube TV with your home internet with new partnerships with Cincinnati Bell and the Hawaiian telecoms. With this, you'll be able to add YouTube TV to your internet bill, um, just like you can with Fios. Last year, Amazon announced that they're partnering YouTube TV into Fios, so you can have Fios internet and YouTube TV built together. Now, a lot of people emailed me, where's the discount? Am I getting a discount in doing this? No, you're not. The, di the benefit to this is the ease of bundling. It's like, hey, I got one bill. I don't have to have a bill for internet and a bill for YouTube TV. So some people may be thinking that's not worth it, but YouTube it wants to be the service where it's like, hey, um, if you're new to cord cutting, you already have internet. When you call to cancel TV, maybe the Cincinnati Bell, Verizon and more, or the Hawaiian Telco comes and says, hey, well, I know you're canceling our TV, but we have YouTube TV. Would you let us add YouTube TV to your account? You can get a bill right there, one bill, nothing to manage, nothing to have to worry about. That has seemed to work out pretty well for Verizon Fios. Now we're seeing it happen with um, Verizon, or with, um, excuse me, it worked well with Verizon, now it's working um, for Cincinnati Bell and the Hawaiian Telco. I would expect YouTube TV not to be um, the only company doing this. I expect to see other live TV streaming services trying to strike a similar deal out there to bring this content to um, or bring these dondos to different stream or cable companies. So the cable companies increasingly are understanding that TV is not the future oh, through cable, streaming of TV is the future. And they're trying to profit. I'm sure these companies get a small referral fee per every customer that comes in. And for them, I'm sure they're saying, hey, a referral fee is better than nothing from no TV. So let me know, would you bundle? Would you rather not bundle? If so, why in both ends? Leave me a comment. Well, that's it for today. 1 p.m. Eastern, we'll be back here live for the podcast this week. Back with the podcast. I know it's been a couple weeks because of Christmas and CES. And we are back um, tonight over at CoreCarsNews.com with all the latest news about Peacock. Check that out. You know, and we really appreciate your support. Check out the links to the stories down below. If you have any tips, news, maybe a deal you found, make sure to go to corecarsnews.com, click on the contact us button, send us the details, be as detailed as you can, supply a link if you can, that's a huge help. Your tips are really important and are a huge help. I hope you all have a fantastic day. I'll see you tomorrow with another core cutting today.